Hola! Thanks for joining my hike today. I'm Kevin, and try to stay with the group today because it'll be the safest. Not to worry you, but a couple of days ago, I read they caught a mountain lion not too far from this trail. Now, I don't think they would release it back here. Typically, they take them to other places far away where they won't want to come back here. So, you know, like Las Vegas and Disneyland, places like that. So, I think we'll be okay. A couple days ago, I downloaded an app. It's a really cool app. It's called Sharktivity. It tells you where all the great white shark sightings have been along the coasts. And I was fascinated with that because, you know, you should worry about that stuff. Just like mountain lions. Okay. I thought that was a mountain lion. Whew. We'll be all right today. Thanks for tagging along. Strap on your helmet, pull up your Spanx, and let's go take a hike. <laughs> Oh boy, I could tell you this is gonna be the safest hike ever because my shoulder jockey today is not only a very good friend of mine, but he's also a well-known expert when it comes to security and protection for public figures, amongst others, politicians and high-profile celebrities. Um, he's often referred to as the security guru to the stars. And he's got a book on the New York Times bestseller list called The Gift of Fear. Such a great book, so insightful and educational. You should read it if you can, man, it's so good. Well, today, no doubt, this is the most secure trail in Los Angeles because we are hiking with the very articulate, the very responsible, and the very competent Mr. Gavin DeBecker. All right, Gavin, did you check the perimeters of this trail before we start our hike? This entire place is safe, Mr. Neal, and don't you, you worry you, about it. Are you a big hiker? You don't hike much, do you? I try to hike every day. Do you have hiking clothes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to hike every day. I, I succeed at it certainly several times a year. Yeah. Uh, it's rare that I go a year without hiking nowadays. So you came in the spotlight recently because you were helping out Bezos, the head of Amazon.com. <clears throat> you never wanted to be in the spotlight though, did you? No. Yeah. Uh, it, it, there's not much uh, upside to it. Right. And even that thing you just mentioned, uh, I'm not confirming. When did we first meet? Was it at a Carrie Fisher party you were doing detailed security? It was party? not. It was not. It was on an airplane. We were flying from maybe... The Caribbean. Correct. And we ended up sitting next to each other and, and didn't know each other. I mean, I knew you. were you. with a bunch of agents. I remember that. That's true, actually. So anyway, here's what you did. True story. We're sitting on the plane next to each other. I don't know you. Um, window is on my side in this particular story. Yep. You might want to widen out the shot a little bit for this. Okay. The window's over here, but <laughs> I'm you. The window's over there. Okay. And while you're talking to me. Yeah, I'm talking. You, 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 while you're talking to me, you did this. Ah! <gasps> like looked out the window <laughs> like something is coming at the aircraft. Uh, then we met at Carrie's many times. Yes, you were always out there, not at the party, but outside. That is with not, your with your men. That with is, your that is suited not true. professional looking men with that the, is not true. with the earphones. No. I can't hear you. No, that, that is not true. Uh, but uh, uh, I do remember seeing you a lot there and then obviously the main thing we've done together is play uh, first, first line, line of books. books. That's a great Your game. house, my house. That's my favorite thing to do in the world and, and when we used to do that. You were never happier. Ne literally. I mean, I remember saying that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. And it would be uh, you, Chandling, uh, Harry Shearer. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Rita Wilson. Uh, Gina. Gina Davis. Davis. Uh, must be somebody else. Barack Obama. No, no, but Obama wasn't. Oh, yeah, he was there, but he wasn't in office yet. Um, Anyway. Now, were you invited or were you doing uh, security for this? <laughs> Man, that is going to be the consistent, even. that's going to be the consistent <laughs> through line here. That was you don't like days. swearing, by the way. Oh, no, I love it when other people do it. I'm not, I'm not good at it. Well, try it. I, I've <laughs> tried it. I can't. You can't? Go, none go of it? <laughs> wow. I'm just not good at it. So you're very nostalgic then. You save things. Well, true story on, and let me do By the way, I want these all to be true stories. Oh. Why did you get into this whole security thing? What was your childhood like, your upbringing? Well, um, you're going to have a serious answer. Is this pure comedy, this no, show? Or can no, be, no, can be anything? personal interest. Okay, let me see if I can tell this in the funniest way possible. Okay. Um, I, yes, I experienced a super violent and unstable uh, childhood. My mother was a heroin addict. Uh, I saw her shoot my stepfather when I was 10 years old. And then she committed suicide when I was 16. Jeez. And I think the the uh, combination of these things certainly gave me uh, two things that have been very valuable in my life. One is uh, an ability to identify with people who've experienced 
victimization of people who are afraid yeah. uh, and who don't deal well with uncertainty, so that's been helpful to me. And, uh, and then also a, a kind of real wish to be able to see around the corner, to be able to predict uh, the future. And uh, that is a benefit and an absolute curse, because if you're too focused on the future, you're missing, what's that thing called, by the way, that other thing, the present the moment? present moment. Thank you very much. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, challenging childhood is not unique. I consider it uh, comedy school, basically. All of my friends who are comedians, and as you know, that's been a, an unusual intersection of people in my life. You do like comedy. I do, and, I, and, and love comedians, and each of them has something that caused that different way of looking at the world. And the, the only one who doesn't have that kind of childhood that I can think of is, um, is this guy right here. Because you just didn't have, I mean, I'm not saying it was all rosy, I don't know your inner experience, but you certainly didn't have the drama that, say, Chandling had or, no. or you know, so many of our friends. No, I was really were. fortunate. Yeah. Are you ever comfortable in a, in a situation or are you always looking for things that can go wrong? Are you, like, risk adverse? No, uh, I'm really not. So are you holding a camera in your hand on a camera stick, and does that prevent you from holding an umbrella over my head when it's sunny? I loved your book, The Gift of Fear. Me too. That was a New York Times bestseller, and it was so interesting to read because I learned so much about what I'd already been doing in my life. And that's kind of, well, I, at the time I called it being a wimp, but it was trusting my instincts. Yeah. And that's the big takeaway from that book, isn't it? It is, that your intuition is there to protect you. And that uh, word, in fact, intuition, I learned when I was doing the book, the root of it in tear means to guard and to protect. That's like the function of it in your, in your organism, is that it's the thing that keeps you safe. Another thing I remember from that book was the telltale signs of someone lying. Yeah. Right? I'm going to give you multiple choice okay. for the people watching. You could tell if somebody's lying by A, they start sweating, B, they get nervous leg syndrome, <laughs> or C, they start clenching their teeth together. So uh, sweating, uh, nervous leg syndrome, or clenching of the teeth. Which one is it? Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to rewrite the fucking book now. Uh, <laughs> it's neither of those. Well, neither is not the word you it's use with three options. It's none of those. Okay, thank you. Jeez, I forgot you were also an English teacher. Well, I'm an English speaker is the thing that probably <laughs> threw you off. You are so articulate. Thank you. But let's go back to this. What is the sign of somebody that's lying? Well, real signs of lying are things like uh, too many details, like I would say yes. to you. Uh, Kevin, sorry I was 10 minutes late, just when I was coming up, there was a semi right across the road and it was, do you know how they turn left right there at that red line? It's, it's basically like throwing down a lot of tacks in the road in front of you and yeah. you sort of can't follow what's, uh, exactly. what's true or not. So too many details is certainly a, uh, a, a big one. sign, yeah. Any other ones? No, there are no other ones. It, you know the what the, the other book big... is very short. <laughs> you know what the other big one is? I'm sign right. of somebody lying? Yeah. They're not telling the truth. <laughs> It's pretty basic. <laughs> One thing I never expected in my life, I've done a lot of things, but I did not expect to get to the point that I needed money so bad that I was doing this hike interview. So bad or badly? Oh, shit me. See? Um, you don't speak English. I don't speak English perfectly. You know speak English good. I, actually, I wasn't done yet. I said oh. so bad, and if you had shut up, I would have said <laughs> Lee. Okay, all right. <laughs> You can be, so you're married to a Japanese woman. Well, you're very lovely. Put, you don't have to say it that way. I don't is think that's that, politically is that, correct. Is that racist? Saying um, it's, it's racist because of what was in your heart. Uh, what was in your heart behind it. By the way, speaking of that you're politically. You're also psychic. <laughs> you mean it is racist? Yes. Ah, speaking of that politically correct stuff, uh, you know, you can almost say nothing these days that won't offend somebody. And my view is, as I'm occasionally public, is that I am not. If I say, have something important to say, I'm not going to pussyfoot around. Yeah. W which I just realized now I probably offended people with pussy feet. Uh, and I don't mean to. I want to that is ask that I be judged. Politically incorrect. Yeah. Judged how, how on my you, whole record, not just on the last few how seconds. How do you walk on those? Well, e even the question, by the way, is a bit inappropriate. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah you just, these people are going through hell. 
How is pussyfooting different from lollygagging? Well, here again, you, you run the risk of offending lollygaggers. It's not their fault. What uh, is a lollygagger? A lollygagger is somebody who basically can't help gagging while lolling. So, Gavin, I am loving your new enterprise at LAX. Mm. The private suite, it's called. Uh, well, it's sort of like a head of state experience. You go to a remote terminal that's yeah. not in the main building at LAX, but is three miles away, and you're, you have private TSA screening there. You have a suite you wait in. That's sweet, man. It's great. You got all kinds of candy in there and food and different yeah. kinds of milks and coffees. Thank you. I, I'm glad it's meant to be the sort of a very high level of hospitality and, and comfort. And condoms, you even have condoms in there. What's going on? That, in the uh, that was actually a mistake on my part. I apologize that for that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, you should have complained. Uh, anyway, then a, uh, then a car will take you, uh, you go through private TSA screening, and then a car will take you um, uh, directly across the airfield uh, to, your, to your plane and then up the side stairs and directly to your seat. And when you land, same thing, you get off and it takes yeah. you down the outside stairs. I'm glad you love it, I'm glad you use it. It's the next best thing to flying private, isn't it? It's true, but yes. This really came about for you because you work with so many high profile celebrities who are harassed by, uh, you know, paparazzi and stalkers, and this is a nice way for them to get in and out without getting harassed. That's true, and, and other kinds of people who have safety concerns, I think that's right. Yeah. Uh, also, the airport is kind of a funny democratizing environment, which is it doesn't matter who you are or what your circumstance is, everybody gets treated like shit at an airport. Yeah. And this was a way to kind of offboard you uh, out of the airport. Yeah. I Particularly guess. you, by the way. Yes. Have you ever been threatened? Oh my God, so many times. Have you ever lost a client to a stalker? Like they decided to marry them? Anything. Marry them, kill them, whatever. <laughs> Kidnap them. Uh, no, Kevin. I okay. haven't. I was just curious. That's a nice advertisement for my work. That lost a client <laughs> part is going to really take <laughs> off, I think. But you never have. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm working very hard. That, that's, that would be a, a bad outcome. You don't have to tell me who the client was you were working for, but what was the craziest stalker you ever had to deal with? <laughs> Uh, well, I mean, probably countries have been the, the, the most uh, problematic, unwanted pursuers of clients. Uh, heads of state in other countries who are focused on a client for some reason. Have you ever been approached by a corporate guy or somebody who thought he was being stalked? He was paranoid, mm. but he wasn't being stalked. He wasn't in danger. Well, yes. Certainly I've, I've had people who had concerns that weren't justified and I've had outright completely crazy people because I'm a, you know I'm a little bit known because of books and what have you so people will make contact and we have to vet people in the general public who are literally crazy do you enjoy working with celebrities well yeah of course I mean I genuinely deeply care about the, the, the my clients and you may not know but only about 7% would fall into that category of being uh, celebrities, a like celebrity. media figure of some sort. Oh, the, really? The rest would be corporate figures and, and government people and so religious leaders and various types of at-risk people. Have you ever been a client? Let's just see. You're so you're so happy to invade no. everybody else's privacy. I, Let's talk about when I've never you... been a client, and I always think of you in case I need somebody. You're the guy I'd call. You mean if you if you ever have a, a mentally ill unwanted pursuer? Why do they have to be mentally ill if they're pursuing me? Am I not, not that? <laughs> now, you're very attractive. I'm I think they attractive. should pursue you. It's a good point. They look real, don't they? They do look real. Oh, hi. hi. How are you hey, doing? Hey, how you doing? Good, how are I you? like it. I watch your stuff. So oh, thank you. You actually do really get out and hike. I do. It's true. I do well, hiking. Yeah, so and you're on the show now. Now I'm on yeah. the show. Yeah, he's a security expert. You don't know him. Adam, yeah. Adam Sandler. Hi. I'm not hi. Adam Sandler. Take a closer look. Okay, sorry. No, I know who Adam is. Uh, no, I'm in, I'm in makeup for a shoot I'm doing today. Adam Sandler. Oh, with Adam Sandler? No, I'm no, I, I'm I'm Adam Sandler. I'm in makeup. This is all prosthetics. No, this is how no. well done it is. He's not a comedian. He's no. in security. That's why it's, uh, it's that's, he's struggling that's not so with funny. it. Yeah, not so funny. Yeah. Be well. Then, okay. Bye. Well, then I'll have a one eye for it. Enjoy the hike. Right on. Thank you. You're so good with people. Not really. How is that? Not really. No, tr true people? story. I, why I was so good with her is I met with her two hours ago and planned that. Oh, this is all a setup. Yeah, yeah. I am 
super glad to be on this show. Not because I have something to promote, a book called The Gift of Fear that's irrelevant in bookstores, but rather because uh, I get to hike. You do. And spend time with you. I you would have done this for free. You would have? Yeah, I would have. Well, then you are. <laughs> I get my wish. You got your wish. <sighs> yeah. What really gets you scared? I probably get anxious around times when um, animals are at risk, like a dog is running in the street, or running toward the street. Yeah. That sort of gets my heart rate going. Because you don't have control over that. That's true. And you can really articulate things. That's what I admire about you, nothing else really. Mm. Just your ability to articulate. Things. Things. Yeah. I can't even say what. I can't articulate what things is, because I'm not are. a good articulator. Are, you're good. <laughs> are, things is, are, is. <laughs> <laughs> I got your laugh down. He did. <laughs> what would you be doing if you weren't in security? Probably would have been a criminal. No joke. I, yeah, I you'd be good at that because you you know all the ins and outs. Yeah, uh, and also I had the I had the childhood for it. Yeah, you and were as a as a teenager, you were kind of a troublemaker, no? That's true. And here are some things I did. I I drove my car on the front lawn of the high school. Um, while the superintendent of schools was giving a tour to the secretary of education, I didn't know all that part, but that was a bad day to choose for it. Yeah. I got expelled for that. You planned that. <laughs> uh, no, not much planning in those days. And I stole. I stole from uh, stores uh, from when I was young, mm -hmm. literally for food. I would steal. Did you ever get caught? Uh, yeah, I got caught a few times when I was five. My mother made me go back to Sam's Market and admit what I had done, that I had taken a look bar, which was a taffy bar. I joined book clubs and got free books, you know, when they would send them to you, yeah. they were supposed to pay later on. Yeah. I didn't do that part. And I wrote bad checks. Jeez, you were, you were a real, uh, what do you call it, hoodlum? Scofflaw, I think is the, is the expression. Scofflaw, that's yeah. a good word. What is in the backpack? Drone, really? water, sunblock, homework. <laughs> and I want to talk about renaming the show. Uh, baking with Kevin. It is hot, isn't it? It is hot. You would think somebody who was as thorough as you would have advanced and this a planner thing. would have yeah. said, you know, it might be hot at noon. Well, I actually did the opposite. I did a dumb thing. I, I'm wearing two bulletproof vests. I didn't know what I was getting in for here, so they're thick and quite That's hot. That's hot then, yeah. Yeah. You, you should. Uh, did you ever wear a bulletproof vest? I have, sure. Just for your home life? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was The Gift of Gavin right there, who wrote the book, The Gift of Fear. It is a great book. The most important thing I remember is trust your instincts. If you think there's going to be an attack, you might get hurt, you probably will. So get out of there. <laughs> Maybe not, though. All right, man, thanks for tagging along. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, trust your instincts, and we'll catch you next time. Happy trails. Ha, 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 ha.